Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. Thank you so much for joining us. And it's time well spent because the Word will always bless your life. When you take time to invest in the Word, my, 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 what it adds is eternal. And so we've been looking at a topic. And it's been call, I've been calling it the will and the ways of God. And uh, God intends that every time we release our faith, every time we pray, that we get the result that the Word says is ours. And you know what? I've learned to make this statement, and I always say this, I always receive. Just learn to make that statement. I always receive. When I pray, I always receive. When I release my faith, I always receive. Amen. Instead of saying it never works for me. That's what some people do. I can't get it to work for me. Well, I always receive. I always receive. When I'm making that statement, if I'm needing to correct something so I can always receive, that it's when I'm in faith and saying I always receive that the Holy Ghost will tell me what I need to adjust so that I can always receive. Amen. So we've been talking about it that um, something doesn't just happen because it's the will of God for us. What Jesus provided for us, purchased for us, made ours as our inheritance, it includes everything good. Everything, everything good. Yes. Anything good you can come up with is in your inheritance. Amen. 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 What about a peaceful mind? Yes. Part of our yes. inheritance. Yes. Uh, what about a well body? Part of our inheritance. Yes. What about more than enough uh -huh. to take care of any need or any, anything you want in this life? Yes. It, it, it's part of our inheritance. Amen. What about joy? Part of our inheritance. Yes. Amen. Um, and so these things that belong to us in the will of God, they don't just fall on us automatically. They call for our cooperation. Yes. So for us to cooperate, we have to know the ways that we must take so that the will of God can come to pass. So we've been ministering on what I'm calling the will and the ways of God. Amen. Because it's not enough to know his will. You have to know his way of arriving yes. yeah. at that will. Yes. 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 Amen. You know, you can know that you want to go to a certain location in town, but if you don't know the road or the way to get there, right. you won't arrive. Yes. It's the same thing with the will of God. You can know that peace is yours, but how do you arrive at a life of peace? Uh -huh. What ways do you have in, what ways are spelled out in the word that you have taken as a part of your life? Yeah. And so we've been talking about that also with the ways of healing. Mm -hmm. That um, faith is not just knowing that something is God's will. Faith is always being interested enough to discover the ways of God yes. and then taking those ways. Instead of taking our ways, we take God's ways. Remember yes. what he said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Yes. My ways are higher than your ways. Yes. And uh, if we will learn his ways, we'll get his results. Yes. Yes. And that's what we're after, right. his results. So we were looking in the previous episode, we we'd stated that there's seven methods of healing or ways of healing spelled out in the word. And the reason is, is because God so longs for his people to walk in health that he's provided more than one way that we can arrive at health. Yes. And um, that's because everyone's at different levels of spiritual growth. And no matter 
what level of spiritual growth you're at, you can always hook onto one of these ways. Always hook onto one of these ways. So I'm going to read to you these methods of healing or ways of healing that we could call it. And then we're going to look at them a little bit more in detail. Uh, the first method is use the name of Jesus. Demand in the name of Jesus that that disease and sickness leave. You're not demanding it of God. You're demanding it of the devil. Yes. Uh, secondly, pray for healing to the Father in the name of Jesus. Third, the prayer of agreement. Uh, fourth, through the, uh, through the anointing with oil. Number five, through the laying on of hands. Number six, through the gifts of the Spirit. Number seven, simply know, what, know that healing belongs to you. Yes. So uh, on the previous episode, we talked about the first one. Use the name of Jesus. Demand in that name that disease and sickness leave. Yes. Amen. Why? Because you are, in, you are the custodian of that name. Yes. Right. It's under your, it's under your custodianship. Yeah. To, why? To use it anytime you need. You don't have to wait to come to church to use it. You don't have to right. wait for God to tell you to use it. You can pick it up and use it anytime you need it. Yeah. Anytime yeah. something tries to get out of water, you say in the name of Jesus, no, you don't. You get back. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Amen. So the method number two we want to look at today is called pray for healing to the Father in the name of Jesus. Go with me to John chapter 16. And verse 23, we'll read out of that. John 16, verse 23, Jesus was speaking and he said, And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Now notice this, when Jesus was with them, they, the disciples looked to him. Yeah. Right. But he said, in that day, the day that's coming, he said, you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you whatsoever, you shall ask the Father right. in my name. That's right. He will give it to you. So he's saying, you have access to the Father yourself. You don't have to go through uh, some religious leader. You have access to the Father yourself. See, you understand back during then, it was the Holy of Holies that the, the presence of God was, um, it, it was, re, it, it, he abode in a tent, a tabernacle made with hands and no one else could go in there except the, the high priest once a year. And so no one else had access to the presence of God. But Jesus said, in that day, you're going to have personal access to the Father. And he said, and it's my name that gives you that access. So you'll ask me nothing, but whatsoever you ask the Father in my name. Look at this. He will give it you. Yes. This, isn't, and this is not a risky situation. That's right. This is a certain, yeah. this is a certain flow. Yes. He said, hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. So up to this time, my name wasn't yours to use, but there's coming a day when my name is yours to use. Yes. And, and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Amen. He said, you've asked nothing in my name. Now see, you're going to go to the Father in his name. Yes. So the, di the disciples couldn't pray in the name of Jesus while Jesus was still with them on the earth. Right. You understand that? Uh, why? Jesus had to spoil principalities and powers. Uh -huh. He had to enter into heaven with his own blood. He was changing. Jesus was letting them know the divine order is going to change here. Yeah. Yes. And I'm going, to, I'm going to be offered up and then there's going to come a new covenant mm -hmm. into play a new way of operating. So in the Old Testament, they used to have to go to the priest. Now he was saying, you can come to the Father yourself. You don't need the middleman. Uh, yeah, right. The middleman yeah. is gone. Yeah. It's you and the Father. Yes. And it's my name that gives you access yes. to the Father. Amen. Amen. So anytime you can talk to the Father, you can pray to him in the name of Jesus for your healing. Right. Yes. You have an audience with the throne. That's That's right. Right. Amen. 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 And you belong there. Remember what, what is stated, Paul wrote in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, come boldly to yes. the throne of grace that you may obtain grace in the time of need and find, obtain mercy in the time of need. Amen. Amen. And find grace to help. So what is that? You can come boldly. Why? You don't need the middleman anymore. Yeah, Jesus right. was the middleman. Yes. <laughs> and now you have, he, he, remember what he said? I'm the open door. Ah, Amen. You can go in and you can go out. Don't go out. Just go in and stay. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. And so that's method number two. You can pray to the Father in the name of Jesus yes. and you can always receive. That's one way of healing. Yeah. 
Now let's look at method number three, the prayer of agreement. We find this in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Jesus was speaking. He said, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree, look at this, on earth as touching anything, anything yes. that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So who's going to answer this? The Father's going to answer it. But notice, if two of you shall agree on earth, we don't need to run around and try to get a bunch of people to agree with us. You don't need to call up 14 people and say, you know what, I'm really going through it. Two. 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 The Word says that one will put a thousand to flight, two will put what? Ten thousand to flight. That's not additive power, that's multiplication power. That's not addition, that's multiplication. And so uh, when you join your faith, and I could say it, I say it this way, you're borrowing the faith of someone else. You're, you're saying, uh, I, need, I need a little bit of help getting past this. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, that is one method of receiving an answer. And, it's, and even for healing or for anything else that you, need to, that you need to receive in your life. The only thing is both must be in faith. Look at this. If two of, shall agree, mm-hmm. yes. shall agree, mean you're saying the same thing. Yes. You're believing the same thing. You're expecting yeah. the same thing. Yes. One can't be hoping it works and one praying enough, and one, you know, got the fingers crossed and they're going like this <laughs> and they're bringing out the lucky rabbit foot and all that. No, 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 no. No, you have to be agreeing on the word. The two of you, they have to be agreeing. One can't be changing their mind at later of what they're believing for. That's not agreement. If you come out of that agreement, amen. Once you agree, faith doesn't come out of agreement with the passing of time. The passing of time is not to determine your agreement. There you go. That's good. Amen. To stay, they stay in faith until it manifests, no matter how long it takes. Amen. Now, when two on earth agree, that doesn't mean you get someone else to agree with you so that you don't have to agree. Amen. So that you don't have to use your faith. So you don't have to pray. This is not a dismissal of someone's faith. This is you have faith and you're asking someone else to join their faith to yours, not replace your faith. But you just need, you just need multiplied power. Amen. Amen. Now, what you receive with the help of someone else's faith, you're going to maintain with your own. Right. Right. That's good. They, can't, they can't hold fast for you if you won't hold fast. So, for example, if you're believing for healing and healing is received, once that healing is received, you need to, you need, when opposition comes, oh, no, you don't, devil. You're not taking mine. You're not stealing my healing. You're not stealing my increase. You're not stealing my health. Yes. You see, you have to, you have to stand your ground. Yes. So uh, agreeing, uh, getting someone else to agree never dismisses your faith. Right. Never. Amen. It's not so you can be less active and then more active right. with their faith. So that's method number three that we're discussing. Method number four uh, is found in James chapter five and verse 14. James chapter five and verse 14. It reads, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. So who's to call? The sick sick one. Uh, Sometimes people would would come to a minister and say, would you pray for, you know, I've got a, uh, I've got a relative that they're sick. Well, what do they believe? Yeah. Well, you know, they don't come to church. They, they don't, they're mad at God. Well, uh, it says, is any sick among you? Let him call. It's not you calling because you want something for somebody that, they, that they're not interested in. You can't force your will upon someone else. If they don't, if they don't have the same honor for God and the same, um, anyway, I'm just saying the person in need needs to be involved. Yes. That's what he's saying. Yes. You know, for example, if someone were laying sick on the bed, they may say to their spouse, would you go call the pastor mm-hmm. and ask him to pray? That's yeah. perfectly fine. You're not the one actually making the phone call, but you are the one initiating right. the action. Yes. Yes. So he's saying basically the sick one needs to be involved in this action. Yes. Yes. It's not just you forcing it on someone who has no honor for the word or for God. Yes. So is any sick among you? 
let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. In the prayer of faith, shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. Mm-hmm. Now notice this. Um, it's who raises them up? The Lord raises them up. It's not the elders raising them up. It's just there has to be somebody. And when we say elders, we're not even talking about the oldest people in the church. It has to be someone who knows God better. Someone who has had experience with this. Someone who believes this word. And you don't want to get somebody who says, well, I'm not sure if they'll be healed or not, you know, but I'll come pray. Well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe you send another, another a little bit more elder than you, you know, that, that believes this. And so it's not just the act of praying. It's the releasing of faith. Now here it says, and anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The oil doesn't heal him. The oil is simply a symbol. It's a symbol of the anointing of the Holy Ghost that they can feel something. You touch them with that oil, they'll feel something. And, and many times that's, that, that's a help to someone's faith. So let the elders pray over him. They anoint him with oil. Look at this. In the name of the Lord. It's the name involved in this. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. So it's, it's, it's the faith. It's a prayer of faith. It's not a prayer of elders. That's right. That's right. It's a prayer of faith. Right. She'll yeah. save the sick. And the, look at this. The Lord shall raise him up. Now notice this. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Well, what's that mean? Does that mean you got to confess every sin? No. If you've done something that's opened the door to this sickness, confess that. Yeah. Yeah. So you can get that door closed because it's going to be very difficult to get someone healed when they haven't closed the door to what opened the, that, that let the sickness in. If they miss God, if they sin, then they need to, they need to judge that. Amen. Amen. Verse 16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. He's not talking about getting up in a church service and everybody airing out all their sins from the previous week. He's talking about in light of this sick one. What does this sick one do? Make sure that if he's done something to violate another person, to violate the word, violate God's will, and God says, this is your open door, you're going to have to repent of that so that healing can be received and not leak out. Amen. Power will come, but it can't be received when somebody's in disobedience. Yes. That's right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> now, uh, let's look at the, the next method. Well, which that previous one, it shows that sin can open the door to sickness. That's what that's showing. Yes. Yeah. That sin can open the door to sickness. So that, Dad Hagen used to say to us, one step outside of love is sin. A step outside of love is a step into sin. So uh, just not walking in love is an open door to sickness. Just not obeying what the word commands, not, not obeying what God's dealing with you about can open the door to it. So get that, get that dealt with and then healing can be received. So method number five says receive healing through the laying on of hands. Now Mark 16 verse 18 says they shall lay hands on the sick and what will happen? They shall recover. That's part of the Great Commission. Every believer should use this in praying for others. We are authorized, you are authorized as a believer to lay hands on the sick. We aren't responsible for the healing. We're responsible to lay hands on them. God does the healing. And why do people not lay hands on the sick more? Because they think they're responsible for the healing. That's right. Yeah. If we believed that God was responsible to heal them and our responsibility is just lay hands on them, yeah. Amen. Amen. then we'd yeah. do it more. Yeah. And I, I dare to say that as Christians, we're going to stand before God and give an account, did we do this? Uh-huh. When hands are laid on someone, that's the point of contact. That's yes. when they're going to, that's their point to say, I release my faith. I believe I receive healing. When hands are laid on you in faith, healing always begins. Now, listen to me. When faith is released, someone lays hands on you in faith. Healing always begins. Always, always, always. Why? Because this word is true. Now, 
How do you keep that faith that began continuing to move? Thank God. Thank God that healing power is working in yeah. me. Thank God it's mine. Yeah. Thank God I'm so glad to be healed. Yeah. See, you thank him for it. Yeah. Not trying to get it, thanking that it's already yeah. given and that it's moving in you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The one that lays hands on you must believe. But the one having hands laid on them must believe. They both must believe. Amen. This is where some people miss it. They think it's all up to the one laying hands on them. No, you need to, they, you, you both need to be believing. Amen. Meaning this, you can't force your way onto someone. You know, you just can't walk up to somebody and say, I'm going to lay hands on you. God's going to heal you. Not if they don't want you to. Amen. There's a spiritual etiquette to these things. There is a spiritual etiquette. I've stopped it and I've seen people, uh, I'm I'm thinking of one lady in particular. I saw her struggling walking down the sidewalk. So I just stopped my car and I pulled over and I just introduced myself and I said, I just know that that the Lord would love to heal you so that you don't have to struggle with this. Um, If you would like to, if I could have your permission, I would like to pray. Would you agree to let me pray for you? And they said, oh, I would love it. And so, you know, I pray for them. But see, I didn't just walk up and say, I'm going to lay hands on you and God's going to heal you. No, I have to get their permission. Because God doesn't even move into someone's life without permission. I mean, that's why you have to invite him, Jesus, in to be Savior. Because he's not moving in without permission. Amen. Amen. And then method number six is receiving healing through a gift of the Spirit. Well, these gifts of the Spirit, gifts of healing, working of miracles, that healing can be received through these is spoken of in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, this is a whole nother teaching of the gifts of the Spirit. Um, To have gifts of the Spirit, and I'm I'm speaking primarily even to pastors or ministers right now, uh, to have the operation of the gifts of the Spirit in your services, you have to teach it. You have to teach it. If people say there's not much operation of these nine gifts of the Spirit spoken of in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, if you say it's not happening in my church, a pastor says that, then start teaching it. Uh, You only have what you teach. You only have what you... If you don't preach salvation, you don't get salvation. You don't preach healing, you don't don't receive healing. You don't preach being filled with the Holy Ghost. No one gets filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't preach against the Spirit. There's no gifts of the Spirit in operation. But these gifts, and I, I want to say it to you this way, these are gifts of the Spirit. They're not gifts of Christians. Right. Yes. They're, they're, they are His gifts, yes. meaning they're under His control. They manifest as He wills. But if we'll teach on it and teach people to be hungry for it so that they'll respond if He wants to move that way, then you'll see more manifestations yes. of these. Amen. 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 So someone that we don't control these gifts, but when someone is ministered to um, by the gifts of the Spirit, sometimes they're not, they're not even using their faith. It's just God moving on them by His Spirit. It's just like Jesus at the pool of Bethesda walked up to the man. Remember an angel would stir the water and... Um, Jesus walked up and says, wilt thou be made whole? And he says, well, there's no man to put me in the water. His faith isn't on God. His faith is on the water. And Jesus said, rise and walk. And he took up his bed and walked and was healed. It has no inclination that the man believed. What was it? It was a gift of the spirit that went into operation. And those happen as he wills. We don't control that, but I can tell you what you do control, your faith in the word. Your faith in the word. That means this, you can always believe. Amen. Just, yes. just faith in the word will always work. Yes. If the gifts of the spirit, because sometimes people will come to a service expecting God to just heal them. Mm-hmm. Just God, God's going to do something. God's going to do something. Well, God wants to do something. Absolutely. But there must be faith. And yeah. sometimes people see the gifts of the spirit yes. operating for someone else. And they say, why didn't God do that for me? Well, if he didn't do it for you, it's, congratulations. He thinks you got faith to receive for yourself. Yeah. Just use your faith. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Don't limit God to only being healed one way. Right. Right. Amen. 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 So that's method number six. Mm-hmm. Method number seven is the best know that healing belongs to you. Just amen. know it. Yes. Yes. I, amen. Just know it. Matthew 8, 17, that it might be fulfilled. Right. 
which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took, my, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. I like this so much. Uh, something the Spirit of God said to me about that verse. He said, uh, you quote the second half of that verse. I said, yes. He said, that's good. That's right. But don't forget the first part of the verse, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken. He said, the unspoken goes unfulfilled. I can only fulfill what's spoken. So I speak it. Himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. Therefore, God fulfills it in me because I'm giving him something to fulfill when I speak it. Listen, God doesn't have permission to work until you let him. That's right. And it's your words that give him permission. It's illegal for him to work without your permission in your life. So the more you say it, the more you're throwing the door open for him to work. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, those are the seven methods. And uh, what are they? They're the ways of God for healing. If we want to arrive at his will, which is healing, we have to take one of these ways. Amen. Amen. These are the ways prescribed in the word. Amen. 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 He's so good to us to give us a divine checklist, right? Um, One of the reasons that we're able, well, not one, the reason we are able to come to you on the Victory Channel is because of one thing. Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Copeland Ministries has gifted sown this time to our ministry. Every programmer that you see on the Victory Channel, we have received this airtime as seed sown. We did not have to pay for this, but you know who sowed it to us? Uh, The the partners of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And so uh, if if these episodes are a blessing to you, If you receive something, we ask you, if you're not already, to consider becoming a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. It keeps programs like this coming to you and the other precious programmers that are on this channel. Listen, 24 hours a day, you never know when in the middle of the night you're going to need to have your faith encouraged. When you're going to need to hear something to help anchor you in the Word and you can turn on the Victory Channel and it's there 24 hours a day. What would it mean to you if it weren't there? Amen. So we invite you, become a partner today. If you're not already, go to kcm.org and you can sign up there to become a partner. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this classic book by Nancy Dufresne, The Healer Divine, we are presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. On this CD, Confessions of Healing, Nancy Dufresne begins to lead in confessions for healing from the scriptures, allowing time for the listener to repeat them after her. If you or someone you know is in need of healing, this CD will be a blessing to you. Order today at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual camp meeting here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California. Speakers include Nancy Dufresne, Jesse Duplantis, Jerry Savelle, and Bill Winston. For more information, please visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.